Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Good morning to everyone who's joining us online. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Um, pray that you, the Lord would bless your day, that your children would honor you as the commandments, as the Lord tells us to. Uh, pray that even, even though our mothers may not be here, we remember that we have reason to give thanks to God for their service to us. We're going to talk today a lot about God's love and the way that God loves us and how God's love is a little bit odd when it comes to, to the way that mankind loves each other. Um, lessons are going to focus on that and we're going to apply that to Mother's Day especially because the reality is that Mother's Day is not quite so simple as we often like to make out. Right, and I'll talk more about that in the message today. Begin our service with a song. You can find all of the, uh, everything you need for the worship in the program. It will also be posted in the live feed for those of you who are joining us online. Let's stand and join together in our opening song as the deer. Let's join together in worship. begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we gather here today before our Lord and Creator. He created us to serve Him and to love one another, but we have separated ourselves from Him by our sins. So let us now confess our sins and ask for His forgiveness. Merciful Father in heaven, I confess that I am a sinner. I make no excuses for my sins. I have sinned against you by the things I have done and the things I have not done. I come before you this morning in need of your forgiveness. 
We join in the verses. to take away all of your sins you are you are forgiven you have been washed in the blood of the lamb jesus christ and come before him this morning forgiven of all your sins you are his child and an heir of eternal life may god's grace strengthen you to live each day as his forgiven and dearly loved child Amen. you join in the verses lavished on us that we should be called children of God now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine to the only wise God who be glory in the church throughout all generations we'll let God's people say Amen. Amen His word God speaks to us and our first lesson today is Psalm number 98 and it's a psalm of praise to the Lord God the fitting psalm for Mother's Day because we have reason to give thanks to God for our mothers. Think about the love that they showed. Think about the example that they set. I think of my mother, for instance, her big thing always was education. And she was took a very keen interest in my grades, unfortunately. <laughs> Because my grades were not always exactly what they should be. But she took every opportunity not just to worry about my grades, but to teach me basic things that had nothing to do with school. And it was always a priority for her. The time that she took, the, the joy that she had in understanding weird things about the world that we live in. 
my example always is that she, she asked if I was strong, if a piece of paper was stronger than me. And I said, uh, no. <laughs> okay, Seven-year-old boy, of course I'm stronger than a piece of paper. She said, okay, fold it in half. Fold it in half again. Fold it in half again. Fold. Pretty soon it was folded in half like five times, six times, and I'll tear it. And I couldn't tear it. Just an interesting lesson that I remember my mom teaching me one day to show me I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. <laughs> and to teach me a little bit about physics, right? Mothers and the things that they do. Giving praise to God for that. That's our psalm today, Psalm 98. We read responsibly from Psalm, from psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known. And revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. The harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness. And the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, forever and ever. Amen. The next lesson comes from John's first epistle, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. It's a lesson here where John talks about the greatest example of love, and that is God. And we see God's love first and foremost in the way that he sent his son, Jesus, to die in our place. We're going to spend some time talking about the fact that God's love is a love that is not tied to how well we behave. All right? God's love is beyond that and above that. The example that the Bible uses most often to help us understand what God's love is like is the love of your mother. Did your mother love you on your worst day? When you were snotty? <laughs> When you were snotty because you were sick and snotty because you were being nasty and not so well behaved, did your mother love you? Yeah. On your worst day, your mother loved you. God does that perfectly. All right, 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even, all, even now is already in the world. You, dear friends, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Again, Jesus now talks about love, John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you, if you keep my commands, you remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. 
Greater love has no one than this, to lay down his life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, we we'll join together in the song that we've been working on, Battle Belongs. Let's stand and join together in the song.
keep working on that one. Thank you, Kayla. She did a good job, right? That's a yeah, tough song to play. Put the bow our heads and, and say a prayer, right? Lord God, Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be with us as we study your word. Help us to grow, to understand. Strengthen us, Lord God, in your word. Increase our appreciation for the blessings that you have showered on us. And this morning, especially, we give thanks to you for the gift of love. Bless us as we meditate. In Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, if, if your mother is still alive and you're able to go speak with her and spend time with her and call her on the phone and take her out for brunch today, you have a reason today to give thanks to God, right? Amen? Amen. If if you can look back on your mother and say to yourself, you know, my mother was a true blessing to me and I am who I am today, much of because of what my mother did for me, the example that she showed, introducing me to Christ Jesus, you have reason to give thanks to God for that, amen? amen. If you as a mother can look back on your service to the Lord God and to your children and say, you know what, I, I, I wasn't perfect, but boy, I did it, I worked hard. And, and I know that I was a blessing to my children and a service to God and service to them. And you can look back with a certain sense of godly pride on that. You have a reason to celebrate today. Amen? Amen. Reality is, though, that Mother's Day is very complicated. As I look back on my sermons over the years on Mother's Day, I have to admit that many of my sermons tend to be much more focused on the shiny, happy parts of Mother's Day. Parts that, that are filled with uh, good memories and laughter and, and things like that. But Mother's Day is much more complicated than just the rainbows and the lollipops and the sunshine. Amen? Amen. We tend to focus on the shiny, happy parts because our relationship with our mother is such a deep-seated thing. Right down to the very beginning, the first one who loved us, even, even before we ever were out in this world, she loved us and was sacrificing for us. And so anything that has to do with our mother is filled with emotion and filled with, with, with uh, a deep sense of self-type thinking. It's a hard thing. Because of that, wounds don't heal so well, and memories are burned deep into our conscience, not just the good things, but also what? Not so good things. And for the most part, I think all of us look back on our mothers with a certain sense of happiness and joy, thanksgiving for what they have done. But deep down underneath all of the flowers and the brunches and the gifts, there's often a little bit of regret, maybe some guilt in the way that we treated mom, even guilt on the part of mothers who look at their own service and question whether or not they did it right or did enough or were good enough. A certain sense of shame because of what they put their children through. My former congregation, there was a lady who came to church every Sunday, faithful, faithful, faithful member of the church. She was there every Sunday. And after a while, I began to notice that there was one Sunday out of the year that she never came to. Guess which one? Mother's Day. She was never in church on Mother's Day. And one day I decided just, just to talk to her about it and understand why. And she said, Pastor, your sermon never speaks to me on Mother's Day. So you preach a sermon that speaks to me on Mother's Day, and I'll come listen to you. He said, well, what do you mean? She said, well, my mother left me with my grandma. I had never seen her until I was 12 years old. She always promised me through letters that she was going to come visit, and she never did until I was 12. Two months later, she died. 
How am I supposed to celebrate a mother who is too busy living and doing all these different things, ignoring me? And then when she does finally come into my life, God takes her home to have, takes her. How am I supposed to celebrate this day? And then she says to me, the Lord blessed me with one child, a son, and I did my best to raise him in the right way. But when he was a teenager, he got himself hooked on drugs. And when he was 22, he died of a drug overdose. How am I supposed to come to Mother's Day and celebrate a day like that? Pastor, you tell me. You preach a sermon to me, and I'll come. 16 years in Antigua, I never preached a sermon for that lady on Mother's Day. And I doubt that she's going to hear this one. But this sermon is about all those whose Mother's Days maybe aren't quite as shiny as we like to pretend. For those who have a little bit of regret, maybe some hurts that run deep, this is for the mothers who sit there and question whether or not they've done right by their children and are filled with guilt because maybe they don't feel like they did a good enough job. This is for all of us, in a way, if we're going to be honest, that admit that Mother's Day is a complicated day. Am I right on that? How do we deal with the fact that maybe as parents, as fathers, as mothers, we haven't always been exactly what God would have us be? How do we deal with the fact that maybe... Maybe we didn't always treat our moms quite the way that we should have, and we wish that we could go back and change some of the decisions we made, the words that we said, the things that we did. We can't. How do we deal with the fact that on Mother's Day it's so emotional because she's not here anymore that it's difficult for me to sit in church to even think about Mother's Day? How do I deal with the fact that maybe my mother left wounds and scars that run deep that time does not heal? The Apostle Peter was writing to a group of Christians in the early church that was going through some challenging times, and he's encouraging them to live the faith that they have. You know, he says, that Jesus died for you, and you know that he rose again. You know that through faith in him, heaven is your home, and in that faith, in that confidence, now he says, go live your life for Christ. The joy of knowing sins forgiven, the thanksgiving that is in your heart and mind, go live that faith, that joy, that thanksgiving each day of your life. He starts to list off specific applications for that, ways in which you can live in the joy and the thanksgiving that comes from knowing sins are forgiven. But he obviously can't deal with every situation, right? If he dealt with every specific situation that every Christian would deal with, how long would the book of 1 Peter be? Yeah, it'd be 350 pages, and we'd be sick and tired of reading it by the No, maybe not. He's got a one little phrase in there that kind of covers everything. When it comes to living our lives in Jesus Christ, it is this overarching verse that applies to just about every situation that we can think of. And if you follow this verse, basically what Peter is saying, you will be living your life for Christ. You follow this verse in faith in Jesus, right? This is the verse. I'm going to wake up. Above all, right? Love each other deeply, for love covers over a multitude of sins. Above all, first and foremost, Every other law that there might be, he says, love each other deeply. Let's talk about that for a second. If there is one thing he's saying that would, re that would reflect your love, your faith in Jesus Christ, it would be to love each other. Above all, love each other. That word love there, that's agape, right? You guys know this word? Greek, agape. English, we write it with an E, not a gate. It looks like a gate, but we say agape. Agape is the love that loves even when you are unlovable. Agape is the love that loves even on your worst day. So, 
And the example, like I said before, that the Bible often uses to define agape or to show us physically agape is the love that a mother has for their child. And I think back on my mother, and even when I was being a brat, my mother still what? Loved me. Even before she had ever met me, before I had ever given her any cards, before I had ever said I love you or called her name, she loved me. Her love for me was not dependent on how good of a child I was, although my behavior could probably challenge that love, right? Her love for me was based on the fact that she loved me because that is what mothers do. They love their children. Amen? So God's love is that way, except that it is perfect. Even on our worst day, God what? Loves us. When I misbehave, God loves us. Before I ever threw an offering, before I ever went to church, before I ever said my prayers, before I ever, before I ever said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to be a good mother, father, God loved us. Right? There's, there's a verse. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love for us even when I was still a sinner. Before I had ever come to faith in him, before I was ever even born, God sent his son to be my savior. His love for me is not based on how good of a person I am, but it's based on the fact that he is a God of agape. He is a God of love. Get that? So, while we were still sinners, oh no, sorry, wrong verse. Uh, above all, agape one another because agape covers over a multitude of sins. Agape covers over. Okay, no more Eclipses, washes over, right? Takes away, overshadows. A multitude of sins. A multitude. Not just a couple. Not just the small ones. Not just the ones when it's convenient, but it covers over, it overshadows a multitude of sins. Right? Just as Christ's love for us covers over a multitude of our sins. I tried to think of a good example of that, and I... And you know me, if you know me at all, you know that technology is not my strength, right? So I could not get this video to embed in my thing. But this is the best, the best example that I could come up with with love washing over, overshadowing, eclipsing, covering over a multitude of sins. There is this thing. When you go to the beach, it doesn't matter how old you are, you go to the beach and you have to what? Dig in the sand. You got to dig in the sand, even if it's only with your toe. You're always dig up for. I don't know what that is. You got to dig in the sand, and you end up building this some weird sand castle, you know, with whatever you could find, dripping sand, or using a bucket. Then you dig this, this the moat in front of it, and you put the wall up in front of it to to, to to stop the waves from wrecking your sand castle, right? And it works for a while. You make it broad. You make it high. You make it wide. Protect your sand. Works for a little while, it starts to erode a little bit, you put some more sand in it, but then what happens? The big wave comes, and it washes over, right? Washes over the whole thing, so that what? You can barely even recognize that the sand castle is there. You might get some humps and bumps and little pieces left back, but the water washes over the whole thing, and all that's left is just the gen. Oh. I should have started it early. All that's left is the general outline of the sandcastle, right? So here they are digging in the sand. Okay, they're building them up. Love covers over a multitude of sins, so that there is only a general outline left. Of God's love for us. I don't know. General outline of the sins that we had committed. But I got totally lost. <laughs> what am I saying? 
thinking about too many things. God does that perfectly, and after his love washes over us, it's not even a general outline. It's a flat, sandy beach. It's all gone. If, for instance, the person that I probably sin against most in my life right now is who? No, my wife. Right? I spend the most time with her. I'm the most honest with her. And if there's one person that I probably sin against most often, it is... My wife. Yet I love her and she loves me and we know that about each other. And so even though the person that I have sinned against the most probably has the most reason to walk away and want nothing to do with me, she doesn't. Why? Because love covers over a multitude of sin. And it works because God did the same thing for me. And so that is the way that I treat my brothers and sisters in Christ as God has loved me and his agape has washed over me and washes away all of my sin in my past. So in the same way, God does that same. We do that for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's really the key to Mother's Day when Mother's Day is so complicated. Whatever hurts there are, whatever wounds have been caused, Whatever regrets we may have about things that we said and did that we wish we hadn't have said or done. Right? God's love washes over. And mothers who sit and they wonder whether or not, right? They've really done it and they start to have done enough and been good enough and they start to beat themselves up because of this or that or the other thing. What did I put my children through? Did I serve them? <clears throat> Properly, God's love washes over all of that. And even washes over the consequences of my sin and takes charge of those things and turns them into a way, into a blessing for me in my life and my walk with Him. How do I celebrate Mother's Day when there is all of these challenging things going on? Wounds and regrets, guilt and hurts and loss. It is with the love of God that fills me with the ability to love my brothers, my sisters, my family, my friends, my mother, and my children. When all of the wrongs are washed away and the wounds are healed in Jesus Christ, there is none of that left. And then all we have left is what? A reason to celebrate. So, my brothers and sisters, through the love of Christ, the agape love of Christ that washes over and washes away all of our sins, may you celebrate your mother today. May you celebrate the example that she was, the good that she did, the life that she gave you, the patience that she had. May your heart and your mind not be filled with regret or filled with guilt. But let the love of Christ wash over that and take it all away. Thank God for your mothers. Let the love of Christ enable you fully to celebrate your mothers. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our next hymn. It's him, no, it's uh, take my life and let it be.
we bring our offerings to the Lord. Offering plate is in the back. Those of you online, please post your prayer requests. We'll pray through those in just a moment. our prayers for this morning. Special prayers have been requested. Uh, our brother Paul, finally, after months of work, has gotten a condo, bought a condo, and so we'll thank God for that and for opening doors. Uh, we also remember uh, Carmen's auntie, who is struggling uh, I blood issues, right? Blood issues, right? She's had leukemia, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we'll remember her in our prayers as well. Any other prayer? Yes, Paula. Um, so my friend Racine passed away last week. Um, we pray for her kids. She's got four kids. All right, we'll remember them in prayer. Racine. Racine. Any other prayer request? Yes, Kristen. Yeah, Isaac. Mm. What are we praying for, Isaac? Oh, <laughs> and how old are you going to be? Little boy, 18 years old. Oh my goodness, he's not so little anymore. He's bigger than me. There are four other birthdays. Okay. Bill Matthews, Noah Clark, Jeremy Hill, Noah Clark, Jillian Taylor, and Addison Luck. What's the last one? Addison. Addison Luck. Addison. We have lots of birthdays in May, right? Yes, Carmen. Ah. Um, What's your neighbor's name? Virginia. What is it? Virginia. Virginia? Yeah. Okay. And for my mother. Okay. What are we praying for, Mamita? Yeah, for my mom too. Oh. Oh, she has a problem. Okay, so health issues. Okay. Okay. Any other prayer requests today? Anything else? Any, any, how about online? We got a few online. Okay, so safe travel for, uh, for Sharon and Jim who are traveling down to Tucson. Um, Cindy Eichenberg's birthday as well, huh? Is that right? Yeah, yeah last week. Last week, okay. And then also Ted. Ted's granddaughter, Lizzie, so we'll remember her in prayer. Um, Peace Officers Memorial Day next Saturday. Okay, so I think we're praying there for those who do what? Those who have given their lives for, for our freedom and safety. Yeah, all right. Um, happy Mother's Day to Negley's, Negley, Peter's sisters, Rochelle and Nichelle. Those are brothers and their sisters from Antigua. Um, also Jake Travel, so safe travel for him. Um, and Dave and Pam are coming here this week, so we'll say safe travel for them. Yes, Chloe. Um, not my dad. Okay, so, so peace in the family. Okay, so Let's stand and join together in prayer. We bow our heads and we say a prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our mothers, for the love that they showed, the sacrifices that they made, for uh, the lessons that they taught us. 
for the things that they did, Lord God, to connect us to you. We thank you for that, Lord God. Pray that you would bless our mothers, that you would watch over them, give them long life. Pray, Lord God, that all those who are struggling today on Mother's Day, either, either because of loss or, or because of wounds or because of guilt or regrets, Lord God, pray that your love would wash over them and heal them of all those wounds and everything that has troubling them, Lord God. Help them to know that your love, your love washes away all sin. And that in your love and in your forgiveness, we can live every day confident, joyful, that we are in your care. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless, that you would heal, that you would restore, that you would, uh, that you would lift up, Lord God, and bless. We bring you some special prayers, and we start with those who are struggling with their health, and pray, Lord God, that you would watch over them and bless them. We start, Lord God, with Carmen's uh, auntie. Pray, Lord God, with, she battles leukemia, that you would take away her suffering. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless the doctors who care for her. Same with Virginia, Lord God. She battles cancer. Strengthen her. Be with her. And Mamita, Lord God, we commit her to your care with her health issues. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless her, that you would heal her. We, we commit all of them to your care, knowing, Lord God, that you are with them and you will not leave them. Help them to know every day that even through this, that you are by their side. Give them confidence, Lord God, that you will not, you will not forsake them. Whatever happens, Lord God, we, we know that they are in your care. Give them and their family confidence. We come to you, Lord God, and give you thanks for helping Paul buy a condo. For Thank you for all those who helped him, the doors that were opened, and the blessing that a house is. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless him in his new home. Uh, we pray for the family of Racine as they mourn the death of mom, of loved one. Lord God, we commit them to your care and pray that your love your, that would wash over them that it would heal their wounds, Lord God, and that they would find comfort in your promises and in your love. And use us, Lord God, to help those children uh, heal and help them to find a way forward, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the many years of life that you have given to our brothers and sisters as they celebrate and mark another year of your grace. We ask that you would continue to watch over them and bless them. Even more, we pray that this year you would connect them even more to you. Draw them closer, Lord God, that every year, every day, they might grow in their relationship, their faith in you. We think of Isaac and Bill and Noah and Jillian, Addison and Cindy and Lizzie. We commit them to your care and ask for your blessing on them. We pray for family peace, families that are divided, hurts that are there. We pray, Lord God, that you would teach them to love and forgive as you love and forgive. Heal wounds and bind them together as family, as you intend, Lord God. Humble them and, and, and bind them together. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with those who are traveling. Um, uh, pray that you would be with Dave and Pam and Jake as they travel. Watch over them as they go. Be with Jim and Sharon as they travel. And thank you, Lord God, for, um, for taking care of them. They were in an accident. Pray, Lord God, and thank you for sparing them from harm. Pray that you would continue to watch over and bless them on their way, guard them and protect them, Lord God. We give you, we pray for all um, police officers and those who gave the, their lives that we might have freedom and peace here in the United States. Pray that you would keep our police officers and all those who serve us safe from harm, guard them and protect them, Lord God. Um, help all of us to recognize the blessings that we have as as, as citizens of the United States, pray, Lord God, that you would that you would bless bless all those who take care of us. Finally, we especially give you thanks to for for, for Rochelle and Nichelle and the blessing of children. Lord God, be with them as they raise your children in the way of the Lord. Be with all mothers, mothers, and bless them as they raise up your children. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, God will be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with joy. The Lord bless you and keep you.
Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Greet those around you. Say good morning to them. Wish all of the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, my sermon was rather short today. Uh, we're done early. You want me to stand up here and talk for 15 minutes? I can. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I hope it was still a blessing to you. I did not mean to make it short, but it's funny how you, it doesn't always turn out the way that you expect. A um, couple of announcements before we sing our last song. Take a look at the inside back cover of the bulletin. You'll see there's a there's a thing that looks like this. So on May 23rd, in the evening, 5.30, 5.30 p.m., right here at church, we are going to have a panathon. That does not mean that we're going to be playing for 24 hours straight. <laughs> yeah, but it will be a somewhat of a fundraiser. So our steel pan group uh, has purchased all the pans except one set, the big ones. And so they want to raise enough money to purchase that. And so we're going to have a panathon. It will be in person, but it will be live streamed as well. And you can donate to that online. All the information is there. We will have fellowship to follow. So if you are here, we'll have some food afterwards. Just spend the evening listening to Pan and then Steel Pan and then uh, then enjoying some fellowship together, some food together. Okay. If you want more information about that, you can speak to me or my wife, who is the leader of the Steel Pan Group. All right. Anything else that I should say? Yes, sir. You don't have to wait for the Panathon to donate. Oh, the, okay. The website's at the bottom of that announcement there. All right. So the website is there. You can go and donate to that. I believe the target is 3000 2500 somewhere in there, 3000 Yes. Um, and it's posted on our Facebook page as an event, but if you would go to our Facebook page and share that with oh, as yeah. many people as you can, that would be awesome to get as many people as possible to either watch it or come. Yep. Um, they have they have asked me to be the host of it, so I'm going to do my best to be a good host of the Panathon, and I will. I'll be interviewing different members of the pan group, so get ready, Mary Kay. <laughs> get ready, Kayla. All right, uh, so I'm going to interview you, and, and we'll have some fun. It promises to be a fun evening. Okay. Uh, confirmation next Sunday, so we have four young ladies who will be confirmed in the congregation. Um, we do this old-time thing called examination, which sounds very scary. Examination. 
Really what it is, is we talk about some of the things that they learn during confirmation class. I don't try and embarrass them at all, but they will be nervous because they'll be in front of everybody. I'll ask them a bunch of questions about some of the things that they learned, and they will make their first big commitment in life. And they will commit themselves to following Jesus Christ as their Savior. So love to have you come uh, celebrate the faith of these young, young ladies. Two of them are here with us today. One is in the back, Anna. The other is playing the piano, Kayla, and uh, they're, they're, even if they get all the questions wrong on examination, guess what? <laughs> they still get confirmed, right? So it's not really an examination. So it's, all right, and just, I always open it up to the congregation, so think about what question you would like to ask Anna, or what question you would like to ask Kayla, or Aubrey or Michaela, all right? Don't make, don't embarrass them. <laughs> don't ask them what Sunday is Quasimodo Genity or something ridiculous like that. Right? But, uh, but you know, ask them a question to give them a chance to, to express their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Okay? Um, snacks after worship, we're re resurrecting that. So on the 23rd, we will start. If you want to help out with that, Deb Ramsey is doing it. Your local youth rally. So high school age students and college students are invited to come June 1st. We will be having a youth rally. I don't have the theme or all the flyers for that yet, but when they come, we will share that. It is youth from all over the Front Range who will be coming. We're hoping to get 50 youth or so. Um, the college students are putting it together. And they have chased me away. They have told me to let them alone, that they can do it. So we'll see how it, was. it promises to be a neat thing, right, Hannah? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. All right. Yes, Miss Judy. Um, move forward in Christ. Uh, I read them this morning. There are some really awesome articles in there. Yep. One about a young man from Vietnam or somewhere like that yeah, whose right. parents sent him to school in, somewhere to a Christian school. I'm sorry, I can't remember. What but anyway, they made him promise that he would not become a Christian, and he did. <laughs> After one year in school, when he went home that summer, he was terrified to talk to his parents about it. But you've got to read the article because it's right. just awesome. All right, so it's our church bodies magazine that comes out, talks about what our church body is doing. Meditations are also there. They start at the beginning of June, so you can pick one of those up as well. Is that everything? Is there anything else that I forgot? Harbor Day coming, if you want to come talk to that on Wednesday. All right. Are we done? Bible class to follow. We're talking about angels and demons. Today we're going to focus on the title, Angel of the Lord. So that's a special title in the Old Testament. We're going to talk about what that means and uh, how that is a neat thing to think about as Christians as we walk through the challenges of life, that there is this angel of the Lord. Uh, it's a neat title. So love to have you join us for that. Um, so let's sing our last song. Let's join together. Uh, 10,000 Reasons. Let's stand and join together in praising our God.